Hey guys, it's me Sahar and today I'm going to be doing my January TBR. So in the month of January, I really want to make an effort to get a head start on my Goodreads reading goal. So I set a goal of a hundred books this year, which is a little bit ambitious, at least for me. And I'm a little bit nervous for it, but I'm also really, really excited. I do really think I can make it. But in order to do that, I feel like I should start off the year strong so that if, you know, I have a couple of off months um, throughout the rest of the year, then it'll kind of balance that out. So in the month of January, my thought process is that the first two weeks of this month, I am still on winter break from college, so I have a lot of free time. Granted, I am studying for the LSAT currently, which I take in two weeks. But aside from that, I don't have any other priorities. I'm not working either of my part-time jobs. I don't have school or anything like that. So pretty hopeful that I'll be able to squeeze in a good chunk of reading in these next two weeks. And then the latter half of the month is just like the first couple weeks of school. The first week being just a syllabus week and hopefully not a lot is going on. So that was kind of how I approached my reading goals for the month of January, just thinking that I could get in a lot more than I typically would throughout the year and so this is a little bit of an ambitious TBR. Fingers crossed that it actually turns out well and without further ado let's just go ahead and get right into the video. So the first book that I'm planning on reading this month is actually Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is the first book obviously in the Harry Potter series and it's actually part of the Harry Potter read-along that I'm hosting here on my channel. I will leave a link to the video in the cards if you guys are interested in participating along with the rest of us. I also created a Discord which I will leave linked down below if you are participating and you want to join so we can all chat and hang out throughout the month while we're reading each book. My copy is right back there but I really don't feel like moving up my setup of my Funko Pop so we're just going to have a picture up here. Um, I'm assuming no synopsis is necessary for the Harry Potter series, but I am very, very excited to jump into my, like, 10th reread of this series. I love it so, so, so much, but I really want to go in this time with more of an analytical view, so it may take me a little bit longer to read this book than normal, which means I'll probably read it in two days instead of one. Uh... So that's the first book that I'm planning on reading. The next one is the second book in a series that I'm really hoping I can finish this year, and that is A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir. So with the release of A Sky in the Storm, which is the fourth and final book in the An Ember in the Ashes quartet back in November, I believe, I realized that I completely neglected this entire series. I loved An Ember in the Ashes so much, and for some reason, I never picked up the next installment. I own this, obviously, as well as a copy of A Reaper at the Gates, which is the third book. And I don't know why, I just never got to them. But I feel like the start of this year, it's a great time to pick it up. So, A Number in the Ashes follows two main characters. We have Laia, who's this slave in this kingdom. And we have Elias, who is the best student in this military academy. However, Laia's brother gets... Um, kidnapped or taken by the people in this military academy area of this kingdom and Lia teams up with a bunch of rebels in order to kind of gain some help to get her brother back in exchange for playing spy in this military academy. Now obviously now that she's in this military setting our two main characters is paths cross and the first book was really action-packed. There's a lot of politics in this which I, which I love reading about and I'm pretty excited to pick up this second book. I think it's going to be really really fun. I've heard this is a lot of people's favorite book in the series or at least that they like it better than the third book. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to jump right into this and I'm looking forward to seeing how this compares with um, my thoughts on the first book. All right, this next one is something that I've been wanting to read for a very, very long time, and that's Red Rising by Pierce Brown. This is the first book in the Red Rising trilogy, but there's also, I think, like, another trilogy that follows it. I'm planning on listening to this on audio because I've heard a lot of great things about the audiobook, so I'm pretty excited for that. But Red Rising essentially follows this kind of dystopian, utopian, futuristic world where humans are trying to colonize Mars. And in this society, there's a hierarchy system based on color and rank. 
And so the higher in the ranks you are, obviously like more wealthy, more power you have, and you're also a higher color. So like a gold and a gray. And then in this, we follow our main character, Darrow, who's a red and red is the lowest class. And essentially they're assigned to go to Mars and prepare that planet for colonization while the higher colors kind of just sit back, relax, chill on Earth. But one night, Darrow and his wife are kind of like, they like sneak off into this land that's kind of forbidden to the Reds just to kind of hang out, watch the stars. But no, they get caught and Darrow's wife gets executed. So now Darrow's on this journey to kind of get revenge. He has to, I think, play spy or go undercover as a gold in to the Earth society that's all wealthy, even though he's a Red. And this simultaneously is causing kind of an uprising in the Red community because they're trying to, you know, get some power. They're like, we are working our butts off here on Mars for you people and we get nothing. So I'm really looking forward to this. It definitely has some science fiction elements like the whole colonization on another planet, which I'm really intrigued by. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I've heard a lot of great things about this series. <sighs> this next one, I still can't believe I haven't picked up and it's The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is the first book in the Prince of Bel-Air. Why does that not sound right? Now this is a story all about how my life got flipped turned upside down. It's a trilogy. I know that. But The Cruel Prince essentially follows our main character Jude. Her parents were murdered when she was younger and she was kind of left as a human in this fae society. Now that she's older, she has to go on this a mission to kind of save her sisters and works alongside Prince Cardin and he's terrible. I'm assuming there's a hate to love a romance. I've heard a lot of mixed things about the romance. Um, I've heard a lot of people absolutely love it and a lot of people say it's very problematic, very toxic. I feel like I'm probably going to side with the latter opinion. Uh, I also per don't particularly love romance in my fantasy books but I feel like if the plot and the action and all of that and the character work is pretty well done, then I'm not going to mind it as much in this trilogy. Uh, I'm really looking forward to actually reading this. I own all three of the books, so hopefully I like this first one so I can continue on with the rest of the series. I also just love books with fae characters. They're one of my favorite magical creatures to read about, so I'm looking forward to that aspect as well. And I feel like this is going to be a fun read. Next, we have Aurora Rising by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a YA sci-fi novel that follows your main character, Tyler. He has just graduated from this um, military pilot academy, and he's kind of left with this crew of misfits as his team. And one day, they're traveling through, you know, space, and they find this girl named Aurora, and she has been asleep for over two centuries. She wakes up, she's extremely confused, and so not only are we uncovering the mysteries of how she kind of got there and unraveling the world with her, but we're also told that there is kind of a war that's about to break out, and Tyler, his crew of misfits, and now along with Aurora are the only hopes essentially in saving this world, this race in intergalactic space. I've heard a lot of people love this, but I've also heard a lot of people say that it was a very cookie cutter YA sci-fi, so I'm a little bit nervous going into it. However, I do love the multimedia formatting of this book. It's just really cool. I find it super entertaining to read books like that. So I'm still looking forward to it. I'm going to go in with an open mind. I do love Jay Kristoff's writing style. So I feel like at least that part will be pretty enjoyable for me. The next one we have is part of a reread and that is City of Ashes by Cassandra Clear. This is book two in the Mortal Instruments series. I read the original trilogy in the Mortal Instruments years and years ago, but for some reason I never continued on with it. However, so many people love Cassandra Clare. She's constantly coming out with new books in the Shadowhunter world. I believe Chain of Iron is coming out this year as well, which is the second book in her newest series. And so I really want to just 
jump on the bandwagon of Cassandra Clare and I did really enjoy the original trilogy when I read it. However, I don't really remember anything from it. So I read City of Bones last month, loved it, and I'm planning on just continuing my reread. We have another sequel and that is The Exalt Queen by Cinda Williams Chima. This is the second book in the Seven Realms series. I read The Demon King also back in December and I loved it. It was so, so good. Despite being a YA fantasy series, the characters were very fleshed out. The world was extremely developed and I'm just blown away by Cinda Williams Chima's writing. I feel like she's a very, very underrated fantasy YA author and I would highly recommend checking out her work, but I'm looking forward to reading the second installment in this series. Essentially, the Demon King followed a main character, Han, and him and his best friend, Dancer, were kind of scrolling it through this forest one day and discovered a group of wizards who were setting fire to the sacred mountain. And in order to kind of stop them from doing so, but also making sure that these scary wizards don't come after them, Han steals one of their amulets. Now later he realizes that this amulet actually belonged to the infamous Demon King, and the Demon King was extremely cruel and awful, and his death almost caused the destruction of the entire world. And so now Han is on this journey to protect it, also figure out what's going on, and we, we're also following the princess in this kingdom in her perspective and essentially she's just you know wanting to make the world a better place and she goes down to this village where Han actually grew up in order to kind of help this poor population. The two main characters paths cross and we just kind of go from there and I really really enjoyed the Demon King so much like way more than I was anticipating and so I'm excited to continue on with this series. Okay, we're almost done. The next book is Ninth House by Leigh Bardugo. This is another one that I've heard extremely, extremely polarizing opinions of. You either love it or you hate it and I'm really, really hoping I'm with a group of people who loves it because I do really enjoy Leigh Bardugo and the premise of this sounds very, very interesting to me. So this book essentially follows our main character Alex Stern and she has just been granted this mysterious full ride offer to attend Yale University. Now that she's on campus in New Haven, she discovers these kind of secret societies at Yale that essentially dabble with dark magic. So now she's trying to uncover the mysteries of the these societies, but she's also trying to discover who these mysterious benefactors are and why this offer just seems too good to be true. It sounds really interesting. I've heard the writing is a little bit slow, but I honestly don't mind a slow burn and I do really love urban fantasy settings and so I'm looking forward to reading this. I really hope I enjoy it. My cousin raves about this book so fingers crossed that I love it. The next one is My Dark Vanessa. I will put up a picture here because I don't own the physical copy. I'm planning on listening to this book on audio and I'm also kind of buddy reading this with Christian over at Christian's Corner and I'm excited to chat about it with both of our thoughts and kind of hear her opinions on it as we read throughout the month. But essentially this book follows our main character Vanessa and I believe her name's Vanessa. I'm assuming her name's Vanessa. And when she was in high school, I think, she got into a relationship with her teacher and, you know, at the time she thought it was consensual and voluntary. But years later, it turns out this other girl also had a similar experience with that same teacher and she's kind of saying that it she also thought it was voluntary, but it really wasn't. And now we're kind of uncovering the dark truths behind these teacher-student relationships with this particular dude. Uh, this story seems very disturbing, but also I feel like it's going to be extremely hard hitting. It really reminds me of the new TV show on Hulu called A Teacher. I watched it. I really enjoyed it. Well, enjoy is probably not the right word. I like the story and how it was developed and written and the actors portrayed the characters very well but obviously it's a very disturbing story and I was physically cringing a lot of the time so I'm assuming I'm gonna get similar vibes from this but I feel like this also is just going to like really crush me and I'm looking forward to it so the next book I also don't have a physical copy of but I'm planning on just reading the ebook for and that's Midnight Library honestly cannot remember the author's names for my Dark Vanessa or this one, but again, the pictures appear for you guys to see. I'm buddy reading this with my cousin. Honestly, I have no idea what it's about, but I do know that it's fiction, literary fiction, I think, and it won the Goodreads Choice Award for 2020. So looking forward to it. Again, I have no idea what this book is about, but 
I will leave links down below to all the books that I mentioned if you want to um, add them to your to read shelves on Goodreads and just learn a little bit more about them. Okay, this last book, if you've watched literally any of my TBRs from the past like three or four months, you would recognize this because I keep putting it off. And that is God's Grave by Jake Kristoff. This is the second book in the Nevernight Chronicles and I loved Nevernight. I read it back in September, I think. It was so good. It was one of my first experiences delving into adult fantasy and I absolutely loved it. It was a really, really great experience. Nevernight follows our main character, Mia Corvair. She essentially was kind of orphaned at a young age because her father was executed for treason and her mother and brother were taken away and thrown into prison. And as she kind of fended for herself growing up, she learned a lot of the skills of being an assassin and is now actually attending an assassin school so that she could work her way up the ranks to become this high assassin called a blade. Uh, and essentially the reason she wants to become a blade is to go back and take revenge um, on the people that kind of took her family away from her and the dogs every freaking time. They're not even my dogs. Some random neighbor's dogs. Anyways. Mia also has this rare ability to kind of control and manipulate shadows, which I thought was very, very interesting in the first book, but I'm excited to learn more about it in this second installment. Okay, those are all the books that I want to read in the month of January. Like I mentioned, it's a very ambitious TBR, but I'm pretty hopeful that I'll be able to get to all of these books and yeah that is going to be all for today's video thank you guys so so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you did subscribe if you aren't and i will see you guys in my next one goodbye